her feet away from from the court, and uh, and and the right. players are not famous yet, but some of them uh definitely now they are in the NBA lah. A few of them like the Nico Kidman, uh, uh Nico Minion, like one guy is called Nico Minion, and the other guy like Anthony, Anthony. Oh uh, yeah, forgot his name. Uh, he 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 was really good at the time already. Uh, So crazy. Nice, nice um, okay, good, good. We're gonna start uh streaming Facebook live right now. Actually, we're in fact we're live already. I mean, I I love the casualness line up because it's a Saturday morning here in Malaysia, and over there in Portland is after dinner. So it's gonna be a very casual, uh, chit chat, um, uh, just to sort of understand where you're coming from and share some of your, I would say, juicy story, lah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the so, story yeah, that I, I might have never tell anybody. Right? Might never tell yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, before. I hope that you are okay with being open and vulnerable. I'll try to share whatever I can. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. So, <laughs> uh, welcome everybody. We have Amy, Akil, Joseph, Sengcho. Hello, morning. Tony Weibo on our live webinar. And we are also live on Facebook. Uh, good morning, everyone. We are so grateful for having Casey Lau from caseylau.com, who is the author, speaker, as well as the founder, um, to be sharing with us, you know, his life story or his first financial crisis, you know, depending on how much time we have. <laughs> And um, yeah, I mean, Casey is no stranger in the personal finance arena because. Uh, He actually started off. Uh, I mean, I was quite surprised. You know, he actually had an aeronautical engineering degree. Yes, I think not many people actually have that, right, Casey? Oh yes. <laughs> you know what? Uh, in in my uh, I studied in UTM. So when I got there in the first year, uh, my course mate lah, uh, is around sixty, sixty people. That's a lot or little. Uh, the whole UTM. Uh, I think in mechanical faculty, maybe we have one thousand student, new student every year. I think at that time, oh, then uh, my course is sixty lor. My course uh, specifically in aeronautical engineering, and we have sixteen Chinese. So uh, when we graduate, wow. I think I I graduate with a lot of our seniors. So uh, a lot of a lot of people also drop off. And when I graduated, I think around maybe fifteen, sixteen from my batch. Yeah, so we we want to listen more to your story of how you be you started off from an aeronautical engineer to going through some of your challenges, you know, and finally coming find founding the site kcloud.com and eventually come to the point where you are today, you know, helping I would say if not thousands, millions of people. In Malaysia, right? You see, we try to help as much uh, as many people as we can, but uh, of course, uh, we are always limited by the reach we can uh, uh, reach to, right? The people we can reach to. So, uh, correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, maybe hundred thousand, maybe. So, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, hi, my name is Kaho, and I'm the founder of J Advisory. So, uh, J Advisory is actually a Uh, personal finance academy and as well as like a personal train training company to sort of help people get real results through personal finance. And I'm also one of the licensed financial planner with attached with one of the uh, financial planning companies in Malaysia. And uh, so I was I was sharing with Casey actually how this whole thing came about was very incidental or accidental. Uh, basically, I was working on my book project and I was trying to find out what is the age. Normally, your know, people actually hit their first financial problem, right? So, for those of the audience right now, if you don't mind sharing, do type into the chat box. You know, at what age you hit your first financial problem, right? And people who are listening to FB Live, you can see us uh, type high, say morning, you know, and also share with us what age did you first hit your first financial problem, right? So, uh, after I share with the FB group. Then I found out that actually a lot of people were very open and vulnerable in sharing their story, and that led to like few hundred, not few hundred comments, about hundred comments, right? And generally, uh, an idea sparked because people were thanking uh, 
thanking me for posting up that post for the inspiration and also the strength because right now as we all are going through the pandemic uh, every little help is actually a big help right so i wanted to put up this whole turnaround webinar series to sort of identify or uh, lock down the actual practical steps from people who actually went through their uh, experience right, and share how do you, how do you define the financial crisis like in a personal level Actually, it's, it's very weak. I do agree with you. But some of the people eh, who actually came out to share, right? some of them can be as early as 18, where they, they've gone to uh, university and suddenly they've got no money and the parents didn't send them money. You know, So they have to hustle and find ways. So in our first episode, we have Phoebe, who he, their parent or her parents actually had to go through a financial or uh, business failure. Right. Mm -hmm. So she was undergoing sort of like a university um, degree at a point of time. And in order for her not to burden her parents, uh, she actually had a side gig and mm -hmm. she managed to sell like 10,000 ringgit. You know? So that was very inspiring. Lah, you know? uh, but again, different people have different uh, situation and uniqueness. right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to hear is uh, perhaps if there's one thing that we all can pick up from your sharing, I think that's a golden nugget for all of us, right? So before I, I begin also, I just want to share a statistic, it is okay, of the hundred old comments. Uh, and, and naturally we have uh, some of the age of the people who hit their first financial crisis, right? Um, which is very interesting. We had most of the people who hit their first financial crisis, right, out of the 30 people who shared, uh, there were about eight who hit uh, their first financial crisis at the age of 16 to 20, which was the biggest group, right? The other one will be 21 to 25. There were seven people. And there were another seven people from the age of 26 to 30. So we call, can sort of summarize that most people in Malaysia uh, hit their first financial crisis from 16 to 30. And that's where we want to also sort of understand or listen to you, like Casey, right? Um, how you actually first, or what was your motivation? What was the reason for you to actually move from aeronautical engineering? Because you mentioned that you never actually had a real job before, right? After you got yeah. a degree. And do share with us some of your background to sort of set the context for the audience. Okay, great, great. Uh, okay, uh, of course, it's a long story. I'm quite old, so <laughs> I have decades of experience. <laughs> so, uh, in fact, uh, you know, when, when, when I study in the, back in the high school, uh, secondary school, and uh, I was very fortunate to be uh, among the lucky ones who got picked into UTM. So, you know, at my time, UTM, you don't need STPM result to get into. So uh, when we got in, it's like a lottery ticket, lah, you know, <laughs> uh, because we can skip from six. You know, I know from six is very tough because I, I've, I've seen my uh, sister gone through that. So she so basically study like a lot, like very hardworking and still not easy to score well. But of course, if you can pass uh, from six uh, STPM, uh, of course you can get into university, uh, almost uh, secure your place in, in the local university. But for me at the time, uh, I already know my parents, they are not going to be able to afford uh, any private college or sending me overseas. So this is my fastest ticket to get into uh, university. So uh, I was the, one of the lucky one. Uh, so of course, I, I studied very hard also <laughs> to, to, to you know, score well in SPM. And finally, I got picked into aeronautical engineering uh, uh, degree. So I studied there for, and I'm, I'm also the lucky batch at that time because usually you have to study five years in UTM wow. to get an engineering degree because you skip from six, right? Yeah, yeah. So if it's from six, you have to do two plus four. So six years uh, and uh, for me, we used to be like five years, but at my batch, it's the first time they cut short to four years. They said, you, oh, you so want nice us thing. to graduate faster. 
<laughs> so I'm the lucky one, lah. Uh, I got into UTM nineteen ninety six, and I graduate year two thousand. So uh, I'm mostly in U UTM. Uh, it, it is it is not. Uh, I, I don't. I didn't study as as hard as I did for SPM. So, but one thing that uh, hit me is that uh, I I know I I want to be a musician because I I like I like music. So I have been like composing songs uh, during secondary school and then in high uh, in in university I joined a group called uh, Losting in 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 UTM. So it's a music group. So if you know Zi Chen, he's he's from there. So when I when when I went into UTM. I met this group of musical friends, and we did a lot of musics. And in fact, uh, when I when before I graduate, uh, I was already uh, making money through music. So in fact, I've been making money nice. money through, through through music for for quite a while because I start, I think I started uh, in form four. I already like uh, I was giving um, music lesson like for the kids, and I I I, I taught in music school. During the weekend, so I got some allowance. I got some money to spend, and in university also, I I work in the weekend. So usually, like the full day, Saturday, the whole Saturday, I'll be working in a music school. So I get there, I think uh, around about sunrise, eight o'clock, and then when I came out, it's uh, almost dark, it's like six or seven. So the whole day, my whole Saturday will be uh, teaching piano <laughs> at the music That's school or in school day. Oh, that's that's my oh it it covers all my stuff there lah. Like my rental, my uh, allowance, my uh, I would say uh even my school fees lah. Uh, I pay for myself also all the so everything covered. And that's lucky. Uh, nobody uh not everybody got to learn music at my age at my at my at my time there in a, in a small town. But my my I don't know why my parents uh gave me that opportunity. So uh. In the final year, uh, before I graduate, graduated, uh, in the final year, I I was uh, performing in in hotel, so I got gigs to perform in hotel. At that time, I think I had made uh, two thousand something playing, uh, almost every night. Every night, uh, not one night. Ah, uh, for month lah, one month lah, one month. <laughs> I earned maybe two thousand something. For I I had to play, maybe five nights, six nights. You know. Hotel. I have to drive to uh, Johor Bahru and play. So uh, you know, at that time, uh, when en when an engineer, when you graduate, uh, how much is your pay? Uh, I don't know what you study, uh, Kaho. I study in IT, and I got my first job as a banking uh, in one of the local banks. Uh. so my study pay was about two five. Two thousand five, right? Ah, uh, two thousand five ringgit. Uh, but that was back in year two thousand. Uh, around around my time lah, we are about same uh, age. My age is about yours lah. <laughs> when you say you're old, then I have to admit I'm old also. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, at the time, uh, I yours, I mean your IT also quite high pay ah. Uh. I mean engineering, uh, at my time, if you're first class, more probably you get two thousand seven. If you are not first class student, maybe two thousand four, two thousand five. If you, uh, I have some, uh, uh. Cosmate who went into Singapore to work, maybe they got paid like two thousand, four thousand, uh, Malaysian ringgit. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So it is. It, it was a uh, kind of, I already, uh, <laughs> you know, prepared to become a full time musician because I was paid, uh, two thousand. Yeah, that's quite plus, good money. Right? Yeah, that's quite good money at the time. So, uh, so it's quite a natural choice. Because as a fresh grad, you also get two thousand three, two thousand five, or almost the same, and <laughs> and uh, you know during that time also before I graduate, I have to go through industrial training, you know, right? Uh, uh, called internship, lah, right? And yep. and I went for internship in a factory in Johor Bahru, so that's I think that's the only time I'm kind of like have a full time job, you know, and at night I play piano. I play piano. I don't have to play seven to eleven. So by the time I get home, eleven thirty, and then because I I was just started playing, <laughs> so that there, there are a lot of songs I need to pick up. So go went back. I have still have to practice. So I have to practice another one or two hours. You know, so one or two o'clock. Uh, then, I got to sleep and then uh, six something, and I have to wake up to do the internship. 
Wow. <laughs> And and the internship is is not easy because uh, I was an operator when I first got What's into them. Well, we didn't do any project, so it's a it's a factory that uh deal with uh, all the steel. So the, so it's basically we, we I learned to operate some machine. So I'm kind of an operator. So I, I do <laughs> as operator repeat the job at every minute, right? Every two minutes or what, whatever it is. <laughs> I get so tired. <laughs> it's very manual. Like, very, very manual, like very manual. Yes, yes. Work, uh, at, at, at least for the four, four, five months, and then uh, before we actually get to do some engineering project, that I can complete my internship. So, so I think do is that experience that got me, you no know, thinking. Do I really want to work in the factory or not? Because no. I'm, I'm foreseeing my life already. Because the people who are handling our internship, that's the those are the engineers, right? So we uh, are looking at them. Of course, the uh, oh, they they'll be coming to the factory every day, you know, uh, solving problems in the factory. So, luckily, I'm uh, fortunately I, I have a choice of not picking that job. So I I became a full time musician right after graduation. So it looks like you are uh, already started your entrepreneurial journey much earlier, even from four, right? And <laughs> yeah. even earlier, you know, I I don't know, I, I have a. Uh, and a story that is even earlier, it's like uh, uh, in, in primary school, I, I was uh, selling something in primary school to, to some, I think I, I was standard, maybe standard four or standard five, and then I'm selling something to people in standard six or something. Do you know what I sold is, uh, <laughs> ah, I don't know what to call that. Uh, Hokkien got chuling ji la, you know? Zongwen, the xiang jiao guo, you know? The uh, oh, rubber tree, they have the. They have the. Ah, what's that called? The, the, is it those that you chew to get high on? No, it's, it's not chew, it's, it's, for, it's for game. So they use the oh. xiang jiao guo to, to fight uh, which one is uh, harder. <laughs> no, it's like a game la, in primary school. So, wow. And so I, I used to like you know, go went went to all these uh rubber estate uh, and I pick up the there there are some species that is harder than others uh, and then and then because it's it's rare to find so I can sell like one piece for twenty cent thirty cent then I had quite extra money uh, to to buy some uh, you know <laughs> some of the nice thing we can have in a canteen. <laughs> Oh, interestingly, uh, one of the people who were sharing in the FB group when I posted the question, right, mm. he was selling cigarette sticks uh, in school uh, to people who smoke, <laughs> but he didn't smoke, you know. So, mm. I mean, as much as it's very illegal, but to a certain extent, it was quite entrepreneurial for that guy, la, you know, not that I'm yeah. condoning it. La. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Joseph was saying that he sell nasi lemak when he was standard too. Wow, nice, wow. nice. Much better than, than me selling that, that, that stuff, whatever you call it. <laughs> uh, nasi lemak a lot of work. Uh. <laughs> Unless you get it from somebody else, I uh, know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but interestingly, Casey, uh, when you were sharing your, your journey, right? Actually, I just want to... Sh- it reminded me that uh, uh, Jia Ling, uh, my sister-in-law, and mm, also yes. Kai, my brother-in-law, were also one of the few lucky people who got into UTM. And that's how mm-hmm. I think they got to meet you, you know, uh, cosmate or uni mate or yeah, something. Music friend. Uh, hmm. Oh, okay. So what a small world. Uh, I just got to found out and I was sharing with you mm-hmm. last the last time, right? So I think that is really a very lucky break because at the point of time, a lot of people were actually transitioning or rather they were still having to go through STPM and uh, naturally, they actually have to spend another two more extra years before they came up to the industry to start earning money. Yeah. So I guess we were also one of the few lucky people because I, I after Form 5, I straight away went for my diploma oh. and through a private uh, private college, uh, which mm-hmm. uh, I was quite lucky. Like, you know. And then eventually I got my degree within like two years. That's why I actually accelerated my process. Uh. Oh, good, good. Yeah, so then... Do you mind sharing, like, you know, because when you, you I mean, you shared in a lot of your uh, materials or your personal finance blogs, right? You mentioned mm-hmm. that although you started off as a musician earning very good money, but p- 
halfway through, you were saying that you were struggling financially and it was even to a point where it's very hard to give Ang Pao. How, how, what was the whole story behind that? <laughs> you see, uh, uh, being a musician, uh, uh, last time when, when I was a full-time musician, uh, I was in school die. So, you know, at, at night time, I'll play in a hotel, but of course the hotel's contract, it doesn't last forever. So at, at some point of time, I think we lost the contract. And so you know, the contract, we lost a very high pay uh, place to play music, you know. <laughs> and I also sing in cafe. I also sing in cafe and like cafe, they, they pay a lot less. Yeah. They pay a lot less than, than uh, a hotel can pay. And then also, I, I, in during daytime, I'll do some music production. So I'll do uh, music arrangement, uh, help people do recording, this kind of thing. And of course, uh, that is just to get some money to, to sustain our living. And our dream, my dream is like, the big break should be like, oh, I want to write a song, famous song, got a yeah. famous artist to pick it up, you know, and then people are asking you to write song for them. And we also dream well, we can be a famous artist ourselves, right? So uh, of course, this is not an easy path. Like, uh, you want to be famous, it could be one in a million, right? It's like hitting yeah. the lottery. You, you, you have to have the talent, you have to be hardworking, and you have to be also uh, extremely lucky, right? Have the platform to get to, get to that. Um, so eventually, uh, as a musician, our, our time, uh, we are still selling our time to, to make money. And I realized that uh, the, the longer you work in the industry, uh, you know, you kind of, you'll, you'll get old. And yep. you'll have, <laughs> when we were still young, we sing in the cafe, right? You're, you're singing the latest song, but later on you, you are getting old. <laughs> then you need to get updated with the new songs. And then there are more uh, younger people, more good looking people who are like coming into the industry. And, and some of them, they can take lower pay than you, right? <laughs> so your, my pay is like kind of limited. <laughs> so like you're looking at uh, my friends who, who are working in uh, as an engineer, they, they progress to their career, right? Some of them become senior engineers, some of them go through management path and now they build a very good career uh, out of being an engineer. And some of them are being an entrepreneur also uh, doing sales in, in the engineering industry. So. Uh, some of them did really well. So uh, what I'm saying is that uh, because as a musician, uh, my, my income is, is uh, fluctuating. So, and, and I try to invest all the money back into my career as a musician. So I was thinking, oh, I, I want to do better music. Then I have to buy better stuff, right? I have to buy better mic. I have to buy uh, better keyboards, better sound module. So, uh, well, <laughs> so we reinvest back into all the things. So all my money is like, oh, change into all this, uh, we call it audio gear, la. <laughs> all the gears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then all the gears are basically electronic stuff and you will get old and you will depreciate. So uh, eventually um, the, and, and that, that's the time when MP3 become very popular. So uh, a lot of artists, they don't make a lot of money selling album anymore. So when they do album, it's not like the album can make a lot of money because they cannot sell a lot of CDs anymore. Yeah. So uh, when that happened, you know, uh, <laughs> we at the behind the scene, we are getting paid to do all this work. So there are no works, not enough works to go around. So, so it's a, a, it's like a domino vicious cycle. Like yeah, vicious cycle. So it's very hard to do, make money from music. So. That's the point when, you know, my, my income is just uh, fluctuating, sometimes good, sometimes bad, sometimes no project, right? So uh, naturally, I, my, my parents are very, very, uh, very concerned, very worried. So that's a, that's a point of time when my father told me, you know, you, why you spend four years wasting your time in UTM? You didn't, you got your degree, you never got a job, why don't you just go and find a job? Be stable and work on that, right? And 
And I feel very angry when, when he told me that. I felt very angry yeah. because I said, because I'm young, ma. <laughs> we are motivated. So I, I have my dream. You don't crush my dream. I want to do my stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what that's my feeling at that time and of course now when i'm getting older i understand how much he's how he's or where he's coming from yeah. so if if my my children my child my only son if he's telling me he want to give up everything and then do something that we know that is you will be have a very slim chance of success <laughs> then we'll probably tell the same thing too right <laughs> like my son yeah, i say I he he it's, he said he, 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 he liked to play games, right? Maybe one day, one day you want to be a, a YouTuber playing games and uh, millions of people watching you, or you want to be an e-sport gamer, you know? I was thinking, uh, if your dream is like that, to be in the game industry, why not you go the path of like game developer, you know? That's definitely you will have something in, in, in this world, right? <laughs> I think I was about the, the same dream. age, eh? I think our son about the same age because uh, my son used to tell me that he want to be a YouTuber and a gamer on YouTuber because he doesn't have to work so hard, have to do pre-production, post-production, scripting, uh, finding on the YouTube. He just have to play game only, you know. So every day play games, right? <laughs> the dream. <laughs> yeah, I mean I can relate to your story because when you are a single person versus when you finally become a father, right? The thought mm. process is so different uh, and. I can relate to that because I'm a father of three. So mm-hmm. those days when my dad used to tell me a lot of the advice, because we're still young, ma, we haven't, we don't know what we don't know, right? Mm-hmm. So we eventually get into that whole situation like, ah, shit, now we, now I know why my dad used to say that. La. <laughs> <laughs> we all gone through that. <laughs> and I can also can relate to you a lot because I used to have that, uh, rock star type of moment, you know. Uh, I, I used to play in a band as well. We used mm-hmm. to have a four-piece band. I used mm-hmm. to play the rhythm guitar. And mm-hmm. uh, of course, we were nowhere near what, what you were doing. Like, I heard a lot of stories about you uh, even playing with some of the great musicians, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, have that. Uh, what? The, the time when you just hope that you have the breakthrough, then you're famous, you know, you get to play in front of a big crowd and you're getting paid so much. Uh, but really, you're right, you know, it's really so slim, uh, the chance, right? That it's really like a one in a million. Yep. Would you say that is one of the turning point for you? Uh, you know, I think, I think when, when I find it very hard to make money through music, so of course, the long story. I, I, uh, I was then moved to I moved to Penang, in back in two thousand three. So, uh, and there are less music production work for me to do, so it's kind of like hard to uh, make good money, just doing music alone. So uh, that's when I got involved in the financial industry. Uh. I was uh, recruited by my uh, early mentor. Lah. He's also KC or KC Chong in Penang. KC Chong and uh, his wife, Mandy, they are still in the industry doing very well in Penang. So, uh, and uh, they, they, are the, they are the guy who, uh, who actually brought me in. This couple brought me into the industry. So I, I uh, start to sell insurance at the time. And uh, I want to do financial planning. So I got all the license, lah, like unit trust, we writing, lah, go through all the, a lot of trainings. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think that, that's the, also the period that I learned a lot also. Uh, not just of financial knowledge, but also uh, you know, the, the skill to sell. I learned about the business, you know, learn about uh, uh, caring about people, you know, because business is about people. So how to you know, fulfill your client's need, all this thing. So I was in the industry, I think starting 2003. And, and then I went through a lot of hardship, hardship uh, because I, I'm, I'm not from Penang. So Penang, I don't have many friends. Uh, so, so what do you do when you don't have natural market to sell? So you do cold calling, I right? <laughs> call uh, whatever name card you can get. So 
whoever acquaintance will talk, talk and will ask for phone number and then we'll call, 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 call. So uh, yeah, I think that's also quite a tough period to build a career uh, in the financial industry. And, and also that was around the time when my son was born. And then when my son oh. was born, I, I kind of like gave up on music already because the lifestyle also uh, you know, a little bit contradicting uh, with what, what my value will be at that time. Because, uh, you know, my wife, uh, she was working in the MNC. So when the time she is free, it will be weekend. But yep. uh, musician, you know, the, a lot of jobs come in the weekend, right? On the week <laughs> During the weekend. So we have gigs on wedding, you know, <laughs> uh, and then holiday, like Christmas, you know, all, all this time, then I will have, have <laughs> music gigs. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, then when your son, my son is born, then at night, I have to go out to, to play music. So I, it's kind of hard to take care of the family at the same time do music. So then I'll have to like really focus on doing financials uh, in the financial industry. Uh. Just curious, uh, what was the thought process? You know, because it, it was, it, I mean, the industries that you've been in is quite very extremely different one, you know, from aeronautical to musician <laughs> yeah. to finance. So what was the motivation or the thought process? Uh? Oh, the thought process. Uh? I'm just know. curious. Uh, uh, it's, it's like, uh, it's like we, I'm, I'm trading life, like, you know, you're walking, taking step by step at a time. And then you see whatever the opportunity is. We try to work on it, uh, whatever we have at that moment. So I guess I have, I, I, maybe I also have a you know, safety net in mind because I, I always have a, something to fall back to. So I, I'm not afraid of taking the risk to do something new. Because you know what, what's my backup plan? My backup plan, here my backup plan. My backup plan is, <laughs> you know, whatever fail, I'll become a okay, full time. Okay. Piano teacher. <laughs> so that that's my like my basic backup plan because I because I, I was a music piano music teacher, I right? am <laughs> since from four. <laughs> so I taught music for a few that years. Means, that means your your you had a degree in piano la, because in order to teach you sort of have to have certain yeah, qualification got, like, as well. Grade right? eight, la, not degree, just grade eight. Wow. Uh, so it's not, it's not hard to teach kids. I mean, you don't need to have a really high qualification. So you were just... So you're just coming or taking opportunity one at a time, like, whichever presents itself. Mm -hmm. And would you say that finance or insurance was one of the, the natural progression because you were financially... So like for me, I mean, one of the reasons why I got into finance, or I was also selling insurance at that point of time, you know, mm -hmm. and what was my motivation? Because I wanted to learn for myself so that I can share with more people, right? Was that one of your motivation as well? Yeah, yeah, I think kind of the same because uh, I, you know, when my, uh, when the couple, they, they recruited me, they, they are saying uh, financial planning. They are not telling me to sell insurance. <laughs> they are saying, you know, you come in and we learn all this financial stuff, right? How to do investment, you know? You know oh, of course, right? Helping people get rich and I get rich in the process. Yes, of course, why not, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when I got into that and then, uh, and then you know, it, it is not a full-time job. We are not paid a basic salary. So every uh, money you earn, you have to sell something. And naturally, uh, insurance have the highest commission. <laughs> you can sell 1,000 uh, uh, worth of product and then you got paid you know, 300 ringgit, right? So uh, naturally, you can, you can sell less and yep, yep. still earn more. So that's the, the first product we, we uh, work on. No? So I guess that's a natural progression. No? And we can also be in the industry and you know, learn as we earn. Why not? I was just curious because you mentioned when you stopped the musician life, right? Because you mm -hmm. wanted to set up a family and call to sort of match your timing with your wife. Lah. But selling insurance, a lot of us, I mean, I've been through it before. A lot of times we also have to take out our weekends to see clients because most of the people are more free on weekends. Lah. 
So how do you adjust or how do you convince your wife at the point of time? When when we I think when I started uh you know uh we work seven days lah a week lah whatever time our prospect a fee we will sure get there right you know <laughs> whatever time it is <laughs> but until my son was born it's really hard time uh. it's really a hard time to to do that so uh i think that was uh, around that time also when my son was born i i started the blog actually so kcl.com was started the first blog post 2006 december and my son was born 2007 so nice. actually Boy, I, yeah, actually, I, actually i have uh, you know <laughs> I was thinking, oh, uh, I'm not a people person. I know my weakness. I I don't really enjoy with a lot of people. And I, a lot of people in the room, you know, uh, party, hoo ha. Is is is. I don't say I I I didn't enjoy it, but it's it's just like not my thing. Ah, uh. you know, some people they are people person. They they like to see people every day. They want to talk to people. So I I know my I probably will love more to work behind the scene. So uh, that's how I you know kind of started the blog, and uh, and and the blog started <laughs> so because behind the scene. <laughs> uh, you know, it, so the story about blog is that uh, when when I wrote the wrote, uh, wrote the first blog post, uh, you know, I just have an idea saying that uh, th- uh, actually I have a few ideas saying, thinking I want to make money online. I just want to make money online, whatever method it is. So I I talk to a lot of people during that time. I think two thousand five, two thousand six. So whoever people, programmer, or website developer, in the overall, we will talk like elaborate a lot of stuff, sharing a lot of idea, thinking, oh, we are going to start up something. And then at the end, I think uh, one of one of the one of the developer, uh, I think website designer, talked to. I think his name is uh, Laramie. Uh, if if not mistaken, his name Naomi, and he said, uh, "Why not do blogging?" Uh, that's the first time I <laughs> I heard about blog. So uh, blogging, what's that? What's blog? So from there, I just started you now doing some research and and try to start a blog. It's kclaw.com. Oh, wow. yeah, nice. How uh, I was born. So I mean, <laughs> it must be very challenging for you because, uh, like like myself, uh, I'm also an introvert, uh, and a lot of people. Told me like you know when I first ventured into my insurance career at that point of time, ah, it's like are you sure, you know? So, what were some of the biggest challenges that you had, ah, me starting off, ah, in your insurance career, back then, ah? Yeah, the biggest challenge is no natural market, lor. You you see some, we we always heard story like, my first year agent, or did two hundred thousand, or MDRT, right? It's like a, it's like. A mountain to me, oh, to climb MDRT <laughs> because you are selling <laughs> policy that is like one thousand, one hundred ringgit a month, right? <laughs> How many policy you need to do to get like two hundred thousand? So you like okay. close, you have to close case almost every day, right, to get there. <laughs> And we don't have natural market, uh. So I think the biggest challenge is, uh, no natural market, and and we need to cold call. I I need to have to cold call a lot, and you know cold call the, we got some customer from cold call also. Right, some we walk into I uh, walk into some stores and get some customers, but like it, but it's a uh, really hard work uh, to get there. So I don't know if if totally you, agree with you. Yeah, if you ask me for <laughs> totally a new agent, agree. ask them to go cold calling. I I think it's 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 the easiest way to filter out people who are not serious. Uh. <laughs> Hey, Kaho, I kind of lost you. Okay. Okay. Because um, I'm sure. You... Yeah. Can you hear me now? Uh, okay. I think my line here is not so good. Okay. Because uh, I just want to sort of drill a bit deeper, lah. You know, maybe some of the juicy story for our listener. Because I mean, I understand how difficult it is to do cold calling, and the ultimate lesson that we're all learning here is sales, lah. Because one of the the key points I think that brought you success to to where you are right now. Uh, of entrepreneurship is really about learning how to sell, ma. Right. So, what is it, ah? Or can you share with us the the most challenging, uh, experience? You know, because coming from an introvert to an introvert, ah, yeah. 
you know how hard is it like <laughs> to <laughs> even start talking to strangers? Uh? Can you share mm. with us uh, what was that motivation that pushed you or how do you like cycle yourself? We we actually got cycled by our mentor, uh, you know? <laughs> really? our upline actually like they're cycling us. You have to every day it's just numbers game, is it? Right, you have to close. If if one year you want to close at least fifty to hundred cases, then uh, or one week you have to meet how many people. One week you have to close two three cases, and then to close two three cases, one day you have to meet at least like five people. You have to propose at least three of them. So th- there's the numbers, right? So we we just following the numbers, and sometimes it's just like you want to just want to hit the number. No, we talk to stranger also. It counted as one. So prospecting one one. one. <laughs> so uh, I think I, we did a lot of stupid stuff also, you know, a lot of stuff that is uh, doesn't re- work really well. So along the time, uh, uh, you know, along the way, we also like grow, being mature, be, being a better salesperson. And and when you're talking about cold calling, right, it's really a, a challenge. In fact, I, I got my f- first experience of cold calling uh, at, I think, from two, from two during school holiday i worked for a okay books bookstore i worked for a bookstore so i booked for a bookstore in fact uh what i want because i i, I want the buku rujukan for free because i work for a bookstore they have a lot of sample books they can just give it to me ah uh, so but beginning back i think 300 ringgit a, a month at a time so uh and then the the bookstore boss uh, he said uh you know the the first few days ah, uh, he bought a suitcase or uh, bought a big suitcase, and then he just grabbed some books from the shelf, grab 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 grab, put in the suitcase, and he said, "Okay, now you go and sell it." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was only from two. From two. Uh. <laughs> yeah, from two with with another friend who are also uh, we we are geeks uh, we like to. We like to read books and want to score hundred marks uh, in the school exam, so that's why we choose to work in the bookstore. So, so what we did is, uh, oh, naturally we will we will just go to friends' house first. We find friends, find friends' parents, you know. So we set ourselves. Of course, we have limited friends, and there's just so many friends we know <laughs> that we can reach, and we we have to you know, cycle to their house, uh, bringing our big suitcase. Now, of course, a lot of the parents they support supported us you know wow, you come and sell book, uh, whatever i'll buy a few books uh, right? and 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 then we when we run off of all the parents uh of our friends <laughs> then we have to cold call <laughs> so cold call uh oh a, a lot of rejection really in fact it's like when we cycle through a taman we try to cycle through some uh, garden taman you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and, and when there are people outside taman in the garden or something when they when at the moment they saw us, uh, they will quickly go into the house and lock. <laughs> <laughs> so familiar. Yeah, so it's like uh after I think after a few days uh having done that, me and my friend when we are so uh, our I think our motivation to sell uh, is like got not off already. We have no more courage to go out already. <laughs> and I told our boss now, I say, hey, I really cannot sell this. Uh. <laughs> and then I think I think they, they change our job or something. When we, we do some storekeeping, you know, help to carry, how to send send the books uh, to the schools also. So that's <laughs> what we did uh, during that time. So it doesn't matter whether you're selling insurance or what type of product, whether it's a book or any other thing, uh, the reaction is still the same. <laughs> still the same. Always re- rejection is like rejection every day. In fact, rejection every day. Even even now we are I'm doing this business. We also face yeah. rejection every day. In fact, uh, in sales, in business, in actually whatever it is in your life, there are rejections. So I think it's, I think it's important to get through it uh, as fast as you can. So you just realize that it is just a no. It's just a rejection, and there will be yes coming soon. Yep. So if you give up, then you don't get the yes now, right? <laughs> if we are not, uh, if you got knocked down by the nose, then uh, you will never get anything done. I guess you agree with me, Kao? True, true, true. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, we a lot of that, uh, but I think it's really about the mindset behind it. Like, what would you say the mindset that sort of make it 
strong enough for you to go through it? Because I think in your career as an insurance or even your entrepreneurship career, you've seen a lot of people, they know the, the theory part of it, but the practical part of it is what sets you different from the rest, right? So is there any one tip or one tool that you use, you know, to get that strength of mind? I, I think maybe maybe my my strength, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, my strength uh, is I don't think too much. Uh. Ah, nice, nice. Uh, it's, it's more like, you know, sometimes when you want to talk to a stranger, cold call, when you think too much, uh, you scare yourself off. You are scaring yeah, yourself. Yeah. It's not like the stranger is scaring you. <laughs> you are scaring yourself. You're saying, oh, what if... He said, no, what he's chased me away. What what if he's banged the door? <laughs> this is all the imagination you have in your mind uh, that is like uh controlling you, you know, dragging, preventing you from uh, doing the thing you should you should do, right? <laughs> Sorry, I lost you there, I cannot hear you. Go of the focus straightforward, very simple-minded, you know, you just focus on doing that thing and eventually uh, whatever that plays your mind, you, you shut it out completely, you like, know, the what if, what if, what if. Yeah, it's like giving uh, public speaking. La. <laughs> I think it's, it's exactly. the same, right? Doing sales, giving public speaking. A lot of people fear about doing public speaking and and to me, uh, I, I just don't overthink it. Uh. Don't overthink. Just, just do it. You know, just go on stage. Just, just, you just have to do it. Time, your time is now. It is the time for you to act. Of course, you have to prepare. Uh, you know, if, if, if you don't want to be, uh, be a fool, of course, you have to prepare. Uh. Nice. So is that your natural trans transition as well, you know, from uh, writing your first financial and that's how it started, ACLR.com. And did it occur to you that you actually have to be on stage and having to be writing a book <laughs> when you uh, first started out? Yeah, that? in fact, oh yeah, also all this uh, had happened, uh, I would say uh, by accident, uh, maybe a natural path, but I never have all the plan. Uh, you know, in fact, I didn't have all the plan laid out. I, I, my, when I started a blog, uh, the business plan was so naive, so so straight. It is to write as much as I can and then uh, got people to click the ads and got paid. And then life will be forever easy going. <laughs> That's the time when uh, you know, Google AdSense is quite uh, famous at that time, it just got started. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was thinking, wow, you just, now I have uh, how many pages on my page? You know, I will get so many clicks. Um, why not I just write more, turn out more content? You know, of course you know. It's not like one thing will work forever. It, it just keep changing, right? Over even in our industry, or you know, even in what, doing my business, it's actually it just keep evolving, keep changing. You know, things change, and we have to keep up also as an entrepreneur. Oh, Gahu, I lost you again. So how many articles were you when you first started out? Oh, you, you're Is asking you me there? how, how me? many? Yeah, oh, okay, now. Uh, did you ask me how many articles did I... How many wrote? articles were you? Yeah, um, how many articles did you target to write on a week? Last time, I I think I I, I tried to target like uh, at least one oh. one a day, la, one yeah. a day. La. But you know my article. Uh, I, I'm not a good writer. I I, I I was not a good writer. So so uh, writing is hard. Writing songs is easier than writing article for me. So yeah, take a lot of practice. It's not easy at all. It's really not oh, easy. Oh gosh. Yeah, gosh. And you know we. And English is not our not my main language at that time. We don't speak English. <laughs> and. Uh, ah, it's, it's just wow. uh, a learning process, no? a long grinding process. I, I mean, yeah. I lost you again, sorry. What did you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't 
couldn't tell that you were somebody who had to pick up writing and had to pick up English. Uh, I think that must be a very big uphill la, no? when you first started up at the time, right? Compared to then and now and this business. La, no? So how, how do you sustain you know, yes, and you said there were so many changes along the way, right? How do you manage to sustain having the stamina for the past 10 years? Because the last round we had the you also made over 10 years right here. Is there any secret to it? <laughs> to to keep doing uh you no know, you mean writing the articles and you know, producing content, right? So uh, we, we I actually I, I eventually yeah. evolve also, yeah. right? Uh, I was thinking, you know, if if you don't have uh, stuff that you want to say that people haven't heard before, then why say it, right? Uh, so, so I, I I tend to write less already now. In fact, I, I wrote a lot, lot more less, and and also, uh, uh, but you you're talking about you're asking about how do we get the stamina and keep on going, right? I guess uh, I guess it's yeah, the yeah, yeah. Is the is the effect of our work, uh, you know, when when you put out some work out there and then you help some people and then you get some response, and you see people, uh, some some people appreciate what you do, then in then I think that, that that's a that's a gift, uh, that's a kind of a pleasure and a happiness that you can find from your work. So I guess that that's what keeps us going. So like like you in your industry, you you help people consolidate their debt, right? You know, when people have financial problem, you help them turn around. And I guess it's 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 not the money that you made in the process, but also when you see the result your clients are getting, right? So you feel satisfied from your work. I agree I with you. That, that's I think that's what kept us going, I guess. Yeah, could it really the results of from the feedback of the people that consume your uh, personal finance blogs, the videos, and eventually getting the results for themselves that keep you. But what about financially? Because I'm sure that you know having that motivation and that the um the testimonial right can only get you so far ma. what do you say to those people who you know eventually want to start up similar like you uh, because we all know that it takes a lot of backup you know a lot of people fail not because they couldn't get the, the results but a lot of them fail because they couldn't have enough backup <laughs> oh, what do you mean by backup when, when you, are you saying that when you when you do when you got into a, a business or entrepreneurship and some people give up some way because of not having backup is that what yep. you're saying okay not not generating enough revenue or not having enough backup before the business takes off la. you know uh i i think that this is talking about entrepreneurship already. So I think I think some people think that uh, when you want to start a business, you you got to cut the bridge, right? It's like if you're working right now and you want to do business, yeah. is it the only way to succeed in the business is to quit your job? It means you have to quit your job and then you have to focus on the business and then only you can success succeed right so uh, I, th I, th I think I think that's a very dangerous way to do things that's just my preference uh, I would say uh, why not work on the side when you have some business idea or whatever it is or you want to start a business uh, I would say the, the best way is you make use of the time that you are not working so in fact, you, when you're not working, you still have a lot of time, right? You have your night, you have your lunch, you have your weekends. So if you if you cannot make use of that time to yeah, yeah, prove yeah. that your idea is profitable, you don't even know that yet, right? If why not you just use that time and prove that your idea is 
actually working and you are actually liking the the business you are you are working on then at a point of time when when you know you are spending two days just saturday and sunday and you are making maybe 30 40% of the income you are making from your day job then you know you for sure if you can work on it seven days you will replace your income in a full time job right then i think that that's the safe you know, you, you know that you have something going on and you have a safe path to to move into i think i think that's the better way the smarter way to work on business i guess a lot of people also go through this this path it's not like uh that's why you see a lot it's of a very failure uh, yeah a lot of failure in business is when you know somebody uh they got retired 55 years old and then they they have nothing to do and they say hey uh, now i got some money i'm retired but i got all the time i want to start a business and they invest a lot in, uh, maybe in a cafe or something and then the cafe went bust and <laughs> you know they lost all the money uh I think that's a very dangerous way to, to do in business. What do you think, Kaho? Yeah, yeah. I think what you're sharing is very wise because naturally a lot of the people got asked to cut the bridge. I think that's one of the reasons I got into my earlier financial crisis also because of business failure. When it doesn't work, then mm -hmm. there's sort of... Uh, although you have your backup plan, I know your savings, but naturally you are caught in between, right? And I think what you're sharing is very true because uh, a lot of people that I've seen got into financial problems, right? um, they actually do the former, which is jump all. Don't transition for a reason of financial crisis because you already plan so well, whenever it hits certain milestone, then you solve, okay, then this is the next thing that I need to do. You know, then we hit another milestone. Oh, that's another thing that I need to do next. So I think mm -hmm. it's very wise, you know, because naturally all of us uh, are not multitasker. You know? Sometimes they, they just can only focus on one thing. And naturally when you're working on your job and having a side gig, it, it sort of, they don't feel that comfort, that comfort zone. Then that's why it just triggers them to not, I think this is also a natural human. Okay. Lost you for a few seconds. Some problem. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So sorry about that. Uh, to the audience, right? If there's any question that you'd like to ask Casey, uh, please feel free to ask in the Q&A or in the comment section. Uh, we actually have one question here. Casey, how much do you get for your internship at the time? Uh, and why do you choose to move to US now? <laughs> is it private my, my, to share? My internship uh, is, I think, 500 ringgit uh, last time. So, you know, in the daytime, <laughs> work like crazy. Uh, got paid 500 ringgit. And then at night, I play piano. Can uh, One night, I can get 70, 80 ringgit. Uh. So, <laughs> so you know, I, I think I, I have to thank the internship uh, because the in internship actually you know just just make the decision for me it's like uh, i shouldn't go look for a job so i i never have the stability of of, of the stable income of job so so it, it, it kind of like you know, probably that also more need to be uh an entrepreneur you know be i know that i can i have time we we, we, we can learn everything if you set your mind into it so uh well if you can solve problem, you can provide value, you can help other people solve their problems, then you actually got a business going. So I'm, I'm, I think it, it happened naturally. Yeah, and the second question, right? Second part of the question, why, why did I move to the US? <laughs> okay, there's a long story. And, and the short story will be. Yeah. Okay, Kao, are you? Are you back? Okay. Hello, Kao. Uh, should I continue? Yeah. 
Yes, yes, please. So sorry, my line here got some problem. No you problem. were saying so about your second question. Why do you choose talking to about US? just to US, right? Uh, it's it's actually not my choice. It's it's my wife who got a job offer here in the, in the states. So we moved to the states. Uh, in fact, it's is you know uh tax wise is is not actually good for my business because uh you know we pay higher taxes here and I'm staying here I'm not earning US dollar. And I have to spend US dollar. Everything is expensive here. So uh, uh, some people say car yeah, must be cheap. Say car cheap here. <laughs> I say, people say car cheap here. So, so I would say the the tax is so high here. That's why you don't pay a lot of tax for car anymore. So that's why car is cheap. But you already pay all the taxes. <laughs> the taxes yeah. can, can you can buy a new car every year with the tax. So. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's not my choice. In fact, my my wife got a job offer, so of course, uh, you know, uh, my business is remote, so I can work from anywhere. So I make it easy, la. I make it easy for her to make the decision. So it's a very good um, career advancement for her. And in fact, uh, I have an announcement, but um, nobody knows it yet. Uh, in fact, I'm moving again. So I'm moving to uh, back to Asia very soon. Yay! Welcome yeah. back. Not to not back to Malaysia, but back to Asia. <laughs> Somewhere in Asia, yes. Somewhere in Asia. So also because my wife got a job offer uh, in other countries, so we are moving again. Yeah, I think the dream job uh, or dream situation is what people always say. You know, you work in an Asian or you stay in an Asian country and you earn US dollar, but for you is the balik, right? The other way around, which you are actually spending US dollar but earning. Uh, ringgit Malaysia, so that must be very challenging that you actually have to manage your finance uh, more uh, easily. Yeah, yeah, it's it's quite challenging because uh, you know, tax wise, everything is different. Business setup, incorporation, and all those things, and 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 you know, uh, I, I think another another good thing uh, people should uh, cultivate is that uh, you know, I, I suggest that you should look at things uh positively. So everything, uh. As a two side to a coin, right? So yeah. that'll be negative, and of course, when that is negative, that will be positive. So uh, I, I, I'm more positive. So I'm more optimistic. So uh, I think the move to US, I, I get to enjoy uh, a lot of the US things that is not, not there in Malaysia. But I would say it's totally opposite. You know, what you can have in Malaysia, we cannot have here. And what you can have here, of course, you cannot have in Malaysia. So we'll have to enjoy whatever we can here. Like uh, this here might be clean air. Uh, it's you know, suburban life. You know, uh, road is bigger, car is bigger, <laughs> and uh, uh, but you no know, food is expensive. It's crazy expensive, and I have to cook a lot of time. I have to cook. We don't eat out, and then it, like breakfast. It might cost you more than your dinner, so we don't go out for breakfast, and there's nothing to eat also breakfast here. It's like all bacon, eggs, and cheese, bread. <laughs> you know, Very it's not like you have chocolate or whatever there, right? Yeah, in yeah. Asia. So Curry nice, crazy. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so what I'm I'm saying is that uh, when I look at the bright side is that when I come here, the challenge is that of course. We we feel that a lot of Americans are very wealthy. Of course, they are poor people, and they live in a very good neighborhood. And, and seeing those people who are who have been working in the U.S. for a long time, they they are doing quite well. Now they have bigger houses, bigger cars, you know, uh, uh, a lot of retirement funds, and it, it makes you humble. You 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 will not think that oh, you are well, very successful, you know. But in fact, there are a lot of people who are very successful. That's true, that's true. Yeah, so I think um, if you look at the bright side, then okay, I'm, I'm just a kacang kute. Nothing much, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree with you, Casey. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got uh, two more questions from the viewer, but I, I will just leave it to you whether you want to answer or not, lah, right? Okay. <laughs> because okay. uh, the time's up, right? And we just want to uh, wrap things up by... Uh, Fielding these two questions, uh, uh, somebody is asking, "What is your wife working as?" 
I'll leave my, it up to you, buddy. My, my wife is, uh, also we, we met in UTM, so she's uh, computer engineering, so she's working for the MNC, la, or the big tech company. La. So she's right, uh, right. progressing very well. She's doing very well in her, her job. So, uh, you know, sometimes I also have a hard time to catch up my income uh, to beat with her, uh, you know. So I, I'm, so when you say you, if you want to be rich, uh, you have to be in uh, as a business person. I would say, you know, you, even as an entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneur, a lot of problem to solve also. Yeah. We actually solve a lot of problems. My, my, I, have, I have to know incorporation. I have to know my accounting. You know, uh, I, I have to hire people. I have to manage people. So that's yeah. not my strength. I don't like managing people, in fact. And, and we work. There's no office hour. Sometimes you know, we have customers who need help. We'll, we'll work, right? We'll help them. So uh, there's a lot of challenges as an entrepreneur. And of course, you can, you can make money if your business is, is good. So, uh, but being an employee is, in fact, okay also. Because I'm looking yeah. at my wife. Oh, she got paid very well. She worked five days only, like Saturday, Sunday, no working, right? <laughs> nice. And then got oh, good, very good medical coverage. You know, so I'm, with, I'm a family member, so I, I got covered as well. If not, I don't want to stay in the US. The medical fee here is like crazy. 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 Yeah. I don't want to like you know, give all my money to the you know, just to spend on medical here. It's crazy. So uh so I would say, you know, if you are working, uh uh, it's fine because a lot of people uh, climb the corporate ladder, they, they do very well as well. And then you can you know, change job and work for this company and you find the other company and you don't have a lot of headache also because uh, after office hours, it's, it's not your problem anymore. When you leave your job, it's not your problem anymore. Right? Yeah, I can, I, I can totally agree gone. with you because those days when we always encourage people to be self-employed and to be entrepreneur, and entrepreneurship looks so sexy from the outside, but actually inside this or behind the scene, uh, there's so much things or so much hell that you have to manage. Now, I also tell people, you know, sometimes uh, being in a job that actually pays very good or uh, pays very well, and it's really about how you use your time to sort of increase the level of uh, where you want to be, you know, uh, and there's no, there's no ego if ever entrepreneurship doesn't work well for you to actually come back to employment, it's okay, right? Yeah. So you said it very well. Uh, last question. Uh, somebody's asking, also, I leave it up to you whether you want to answer or not. Uh, your son will be following as well, or is he studying at his own? So I think <laughs> not too sure what this question means. Oh, my son is 14 years old. So he's supposed to going uh, to high school uh, in this, uh, after this summer. So in this fall, uh, he's going to high school. So of course he's following us. We're not going to leave him here. <laughs> so he'll be studying in an uh, international school in one of the Asia country. I don't want to say what, which, which country yet. Uh, so that you can keep following me so you can get the news if you want to know. <laughs> uh, but we're going to announce soon. I think what, what he's asking, maybe perhaps I just follow up with a question. Uh, would, would you encourage your son to follow your footsteps, I think, uh, as an entrepreneur? Or would you encourage him to be able to do what he loves on his own, like the YouTuber game and all those things? Maybe that, that's the gist of the question. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I think the, gener my, the generation of our children, uh, like Kaho, you have your children as well. Uh, I think they are very fortunate. Uh, right? <laughs> they are very, very fortunate. Uh, we, very. Yeah, we know our parents, they, they went through a lot, right? To get us to uh, our level, give us education so that we can make good money, right? And then, uh, and then for our children, they are not just getting good education and they are also inheriting what we accumulate, right? During our lifetime. Yep. Yep. And, and, and for my son, uh, I, I never ask him say you, you you have to go this path or go that path because every path lead to Rome if that's your destination yep. right so yep. uh, he he can see a lot of success stories so you no know, I I work on my business which is a lifestyle business I get to be home all the time 
right, very flexible. And you sort of enjoy my you know, seeing you know, or that one, your, your job is like a dream job. Uh. On a weekday, you can go hiking. And then, uh, <laughs> so at, well, it's, it's like I'm available all the time to, to, yep. my, to my son. So, uh, and then he also have uh, uh, his mother, also a very successful um, person uh, as an employee, working a very yep. uh, good job. She's managing more than 200 people in the high-tech company. Wow. Yeah, so he's, he's quite a very high-level uh, uh, employee as well. So uh, there's another success story. So uh, we, uh, no, I, I didn't actually restrict him, but uh, we, we try to let him have the imagination, right? whatever you set your mind into it. You know? just, there, there's just many ways to do it. We just, I will, what we want to see is just he having the motivation to do the things that he, he he's passionate about. So you can be successful in anything you want to do if you set your mind into it. I think that's how, what you mean by the kids are so lucky these days is because as a parent, we already understood how painful it was for our parents and right now they actually have a lot of choice to really fulfill mm. their dream journey right i think that's what you mean uh thank you so much can see uh uh I, we, I really learned a lot actually there's three things i like to summarize but before i let you go <laughs> there's one mm. last question i like to ask from for myself and hopefully this one can actually benefit a lot of the audience today because you've been sharing so much on personal finance, right? And today we actually went through, I think easily from when you were primary school up until to this point, being a entrepreneur, water speaker, right? And you shared so many thousands of personal finance tips. If there's one personal finance tip that I ask you to share, that sort of be like your go-to personal finance, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, throughout your struggling journey, right? What would that be? Uh, so, so the tips is like for ordinary people that if, if you know this, you'll be doing uh, well financially, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So I, I think I can uh, distill it now down to maybe one or two, la, maybe two. La. So one okay. is, uh, one is of course, you have to spend below your means. That means how much, whatever, much money you can make. Uh, you have to save, you have to save, you have to keep a part of it. So that means if you want to keep part of it, you have to spend less than you make, right? All the time. Yep. Yep. So uh, I went through that period when I spent more than I earned. Right? There was a time, I think I, I want to join uh, my friend going to uh, Pulau Redang. So I don't have the money to go to Pulau Redang at that time. I think the trip cost like 500 ringgit, 600 ringgit. So I was, uh, I think I was in final year of my UTM. So uh, what I did is I asked an advance from my uh, manager. He said, hey, this, this month pay, can you give me first? <laughs> because I want to go to Pula Rang. <laughs> so of course I said, okay, no problem. So I got paid first. He sort of like loaned me the salary that's supposed to be paid last uh, next month. So I went there, yep. you know, uh, of course, I feel good playing, uh, going to have fun with friends, but it, it make you uh, sort of embarrassed also, uh, you know, asking money uh, that you're not supposed to be paid yet. So um, if, yeah. uh, so the first, first thing is you must know how much you made and you will never spend more than that, right? Whatever it is. I used to make 200 ringgit a month uh, when I was in uh, U UTM, right? maybe 500 just from teaching piano, but I, we can still survive, right? We will, wow. we will limit, uh, you know, when you go to the economy rise, uh, you will take the cheap stuff, la, you, know, you don't take yeah, all yeah. the you know, chicken, uh, all this <laughs> piece of meat, right? Veggie, <laughs> la, the veggie. La. Veggie, la, and then uh, the, uh, curry sauce, la, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so, so the first thing, that, that's it. So. Uh, if you make less to spend less is fine because life is a progress it's not like yeah. you have to spend a lot of money to, to enjoy life in fact life is not about spending money right it's, it's just the process or the progress the development uh, this is the first tip and then the second thing is uh you have to know how to invest huh? you have to know how to invest to get at least double digit 
of your income. If, if not, you will not be able to enjoy my life as much. For example, uh, if you can accumulate 1 million, so if you know how to invest and make uh, 10% in every year, then that 1 million can generate 100,000 for you every year. Yep, yep. So if you don't know how to invest, then you put it in a bank, then you get 2%, that's 20,000 a year. And also investing, people think it's very complicated. You have to be super smart. Uh, do trading in and out and find the next Bitcoin or you buy the Bitcoin yeah. when it is not Bitcoin yet. You know? <laughs> so, uh, you were, and you want to buy Tesla when it is not like this valuation. Anymore. But I'll tell you, uh, you know, investing is not buying lottery ticket. It's actually very simple. It's just, uh, you no, know, if you don't know how to invest, very simple, you have to have the concept. You have to own good businesses and now you know, after you have so many uh, you know the exchange stock exchange you can in fact own a lot of great business superb businesses very easily the transaction, transaction cost is so low so the commission to buy a stock is so low so you can just buy and keep but of course you have to know uh, what are the company that will do well in the next decades or two you know, at least you have to think like, right? will this company will be good after one or two decades? You know, then you buy and keep. So uh, that's how a lot of uh, you know uh, people in Malaysia uh, who own like you know, stocks of public bank, you know, a lot of them who didn't sell since the start, they are all millionaires right now. And the people who own like Berkshire Hathaway, since it's got uh their shares as a partnership uh, back in 1967 you know, if you own 20,000 now it's worth a few hundred million US dollars wow. yeah it's like 20,000 become a few hundred million that, yeah that's true so uh, you no, know, just owning assets we have to own assets we have to own stocks uh, businesses assets so I think personal finance is actually as simple as that I, I think you said it very well, like I said, I couldn't agree with you more. The, the moment when you say it's easy, uh, a lot of people who are starting to do it or doing it at the time, uh, I think mm. the biggest struggle that they have is that perhaps they're not, they're not willing to put in the work or they have not started putting in the work. So you always feel like there's a hill to climb. Uh. I mean, you go hiking every week, you know the feeling. Yeah. Maybe that's the reason why you go hiking every week. <laughs> 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 right, so I I really want to thank you for your time, Casey. I think you spent more than one hour with us today, sharing us throughout your journey. And I just want to wrap up today's session by the three biggest takeaway for myself. I'm not sure how many of the participants uh, got. I think if they got one thing to take away from this session, is really like a golden nugget. Uh, in a nutshell, I think how you go through your journey from being a uh, aeronautical engineer to being uh, starting a full-time musician you know transition from being an agent all the way to be to be where you are right now like author speaker and founder I can sum it up into three uh, takeaway like. number one is really you really need to fall back into having that skill set the backup plan where you mentioned just now you know uh, if everything doesn't work <laughs> you always have something to fall back on which is your skill like, you know uh, I think that will relate to a lot of people who are struggling right now because um, a lot of them actually have a lot of good skills, but they do not know how to monetize it or they do not even realize that they actually have that, right? And number two is really the straightforward, the simple-mindedness, that focus, the clarity, right? Of really going all out, doing what you set up to do. It's so simple, but yet for people like me, you know, I, I used to overthink a lot of things, you know, worry this, worry that, what if this, what is that, that sometimes people could have run a few hundred meters ahead and I'm still just starting. <laughs> and number three will be never quit your job or never quit what works for you right now, although you want to get into a different project or a different entrepreneurship journey. Uh, it's always about transitioning, uh, having, having to hit certain milestones while you take on the bigger step, right? So I cannot thank you more enough, Casey, uh, because uh, like you say, 
earlier in the session, you, you're not sure whether you actually have a turnaround story, but actually your story do inspire me as well as some of the people because I see a lot of resemblance in our life journey. Thank you so much, Casey. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share the stories with your audience. Yeah, any last word before we uh, end today's uh, Saturday so that people can go enjoy the weekend? Uh, oh, thanks. I, I think the people who are here today, uh, you, you are different from other people, right? Uh, you know, now I, I found that a lot of people spend a lot of time on, uh, on entertainment, right? Because there's unlimited shows out there. <laughs> you have Netflix, <laughs> no? you have YouTube, you, know? you have all of stuff that is like entertainment. So uh, that's one thing I cannot stand is when my son spent too much time on entertainment. So I, I, I always tell him, you know, you, we have to limit him when he, when he does that. And I, 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 would, I always told him, you, if you want to be a successful person, you have to be a producer. So you have to, be, you have to produce something instead of consumer. So consumer, of course, you can consume a lot of stuff, right? But consumer gets you nowhere. So you have to be a producer. And the people today here, I, I guess they are here to learn something. And um, when, when you're learning, you grow, you're getting smarter every day. And when you know you are getting smarter than yesterday and you do it every day, you are going to be a very successful person. So I believe everybody here today, you are going to get somewhere. So when you get somewhere, when you write your book, uh, when you... You know, uh, do your talk, do your thank you talk or whatever. Uh, mention Kaho, who actually you know, organized this session for all of you. Thank you so much, Casey. Uh, I cannot thank you more for the last part, especially. Uh, again, uh, have a happy weekend. Uh, thanks to all those of you who joined us today. Like what Casey said, uh, there's so much interesting insight that he shared. I'm not sure... Uh, whether you shared with anybody else before, but I'm very grateful to hear that part of it, you know, uh, to be so open and transparent. So have a safe weekend. Uh, have a fun weekend. Take care, guys. Thanks, Bye. Casey. Bye. Thank you.